Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, collectors, creators, artists, writers of all ages, welcome back to Aussie Verse, your home of collected editions, pop culture, and all the nerdy, nerdy stuff. I am Omnibo, joined by Sharif, and we have our very first guest all the way from Singapore today. Sharif went out and made the call to the Singapore comics community, and we only had one person, one person. <laughs> Turn around and take us up on that offer. Where are the rest of you? You could be on this show. Do you want to be as cool as this guy? Who is he? His name is Kang Jing, and he is here to talk about all of his comic creativity. Thank you very much for joining us today, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Right. Um, your, pr your pronunciation of my name, that, that was a perfect pronunciation. Not everybody oh, can get it right. Yeah, that was really good. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. I knew that, see, <laughs> it's the Kang is easy, especially being a Marvel lover, right? Because <laughs> that is that is just a sick first name. That is awesome, fantastic. <laughs> but, you know, when it comes to words like, you know, Jing, it can, it, they can be pronounced different ways. Yep. So should there be a, should there be a Jing or Jing or <laughs> I don't know. So, so I'm grateful. Cool, 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 man. So um, Sharif. Um, did you guys know each other before this, or is it the first time you guys are meeting as well? Dude, all three of us here are looking at Kang Jing. Well, what am I talking about? Uh, this is the first time I'm seeing Kang Jing. Uh, but, you know, we've, we've, we're, both of us are, are part of the Singapore comics community. We may have interacted uh, before and not know, uh, but I... I I think both both of us are pretty active in that Facebook group, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, a call was sent out and Kang Jin responded. So here we are. <laughs> yeah. So no. Yeah, so actually, no actually, right. Sorry, I just want to add on. Actually, uh, when I connected with Sharif on um, the Facebook Messenger, I noticed that we actually had an interaction a few years back. Uh, I did. When I think. When Sharif was actually, I think you were clearing some of the comics when I think when you're preparing for migration or or something like that. And did, then, did you did you come by? Yes, I I think I think I went by your house and then oh. uh, I got two fantastic comics. If I'm a fantastic four comics, if I'm not wrong, based on based on the check of, uh the conversation the conversation history. Yeah. Oh, that was like when was that? Twenty seventeen. So <laughs> it's a long ago. Yeah. Wow. So, wow. so forgive, forgive me if um, I didn't recognize you. Um, it was a busy no, day. Yeah. I couldn't recognize myself <laughs> until I saw the I saw the history. Now I'm like, mm, okay, Facebook Messenger is doing a good job. <laughs> well, speaking of recognition, the, we, we want to say the ones that we recognize are our very own four lifers here on Aussie Verse. That being Mrs. Jones's Honeycomb, the fourth monkey, Ben Sullivan and Simple Simon. Thank you very much for being our paid subscribers to Aussie Verse. And if you're considering this, just remember as much as we appreciate it, the best way you can support our channel is by simply liking the videos, sharing, and of course, subscribing. Enough of the plugin. Let's get down to some loving. All right. So, Mr. Kang Jing, please tell us, sir, who you are, why you are, what you are, what is going on with you. <laughs> Just tell us all about you, sir. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm a comic cover and sketch card artist in, uh, based in Singapore. All right. So, I have been doing my comics, uh, creator own comics for perhaps five to six years now. I have also been delving into like cover art as well as uh, sketch card recently as well. Yep. So, Basically, Fantastic. drawing and and writing comics. That's my thing. Cool. So, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? How old do I look? Yeah. Oh no. That, okay. No, we're not <laughs> playing that game. The reason why I was asking is because I was going to allude to how long you've been doing this. You know, a lot of people have been yep. doing it to like like when they're a kid or only the last few years. So maybe don't answer how old you are. Just how long you've been doing this? <laughs> right. I'm I'm actually turning thirty in a few a few weeks time. In fact, right. Uh, so I've been doing this for about six years. Twenty, I think about twenty eighteen when I started drawing again, uh, taking it more seriously in twenty nineteen. And that's a a good five to six years since then. Oh wow. Okay. I would have thought you were doing it a lot longer because I checked out your monster 
200 pain. The beast that you sent us to read. And, man, what a huge, huge book. Sharif, did you get a chance to check it out? Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, but I, I did. I, I did check out uh, a few interviews that Kang Ching had um, with uh, some content creators uh, back in Singapore, and I, I gotta admit, I am really impressed with your work, KJ. Thank you. <laughs> so speaking of that, let's go check out some of your work here. Oh, that was the wrong button. Okay, so. First of all, you know what? Before we check out your work, which probably shows some, let's see your Instagram here so that other people can know. Now, I do have to warn people that, unfortunately, the links that we have are giant monster uh, uh, gobbledygook uh, links. So if you won't have time to write these down, but they will be in the descriptions. So if you are interested in checking out any of his work here, whether it be the Instagram or the ones that we're going to show, please go to the description and click on the links like so. <laughs> we'll see. That's, okay, that's really long. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's massive. So again, it will be there in the links. Now, another thing I'm going to do is like swap our heads so that your beautiful face isn't covered. So please tell us what's going on here with your Instagram. Right, Who is so, uh, Chiral Comics? Yep, again, perfect pronunciation. Yep, Chiral Comics. So I, I named it Chiral Comics because I'm actually a chemistry graduate in university. So oh. yeah, I study chemistry. And Chiral is actually like a like a term used in chemistry a lot. So yeah, just basically joining two things that I do in life, like Chiral, uh, chemistry as well as uh, comics. So Chiral Comics. Oh, wow. I would not have picked up on that. So what's and some of the stuff we're looking at? Mm. Mm -hmm. yep. So I'm actually not very active on my Instagram as well. <laughs> I haven't been posting very religiously recently. So yeah, you can see that this is already April. <laughs> and this is March. <laughs> and it's it's such a huge variety of work um, that you've done, um, you know, local oh. stuff and international uh, stuff like that. <laughs> man oh dude i hadn't actually checked out your instagram if i'm being honest these are awesome where's this comic-con singapore comic-con yep this was singapore comic-con uh last year right so that is about eight months eight months back really wow so is much of this art that we're looking at a lot later than the 200-page graphic novel? Mm, they are slightly later, yes. Because the 200-page graphic novel, I did it back in, I can't remember the exact year, but it was, I believe it should be 2022. And then I did it until 2023, which I launched on Kickstarter. Right, so oh. between 2022 to 2023, whereas all these pieces were done in 2023. Oh, look at that. Ninja Turtles and all, all this, yep. Oh, I love that. That is fantastic. This is some of the art you'll see in his uh, graphic novel. What's the title of that graphic novel? It's called uh, Zhao, Z-H-A-O, or pronounced as uh, Zhao. So it's a, it's a direct it was... translation from uh, the, China, the, the Mandarin pronunciation. What I really dug about the book was the uh, the action, the storytelling, the art, all the normal things that you would see in a book that most people would say that they enjoy in a book. But what I found really, really cool was that the whole the whole book, the, sorry, the whole story isn't two hundred pages. It was about one hundred and seventy pages, and the last thirty pages is not just art and sketches and things like that, but you also went into um, not, uh, this big history lesson as well, and there was just so much information in there that I found really, really fascinating, so much so that I didn't actually get a chance to read all of it because there was just so much in there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so for that last 
two, I think a, a few pages of a history lesson that was actually credits to, to my editor who's uh, Api. So he, ha he actually wrote that. I, I wouldn't be able to write it myself, <laughs> but yeah. it was very well written uh, because the story is actually based, I mean like semi-based on his, historical uh, facts. And then of course uh, it's a historical fiction story, uh, but based on some historical events. So he actually brought that in as part of the, you know, like, like the bonus content for people who are interested to find out about the real history. Fantastic, man. I love Ooh, this when, one too. When, when, you, when you say his, historical fiction, um, are you basing uh, the characters in the story of actual uh, people who have existed and just telling your story through them? Uh, so for, for this story itself, it's actually uh, fictional characters. The main, the, the main protagonists are fictional characters based in a setting that is of actual history, right? So mm. they actually get to interact with like uh, real historical figures like uh, Kublai Khan or like Marco Polo, right? So that's, that's the, actually the fun part of, about it as well, right? Uh, then the setting itself is actually also set. We, we try to keep it uh, close to actual historical events as well. Like for example, if it's like uh, 127, the year 1279, then uh, a real historical event had happened during that year. Then we try to keep it, uh, keep the story consistent with with that historical event as well. So how, how much how much um, research is, is uh, needed <laughs> when when you you know you you're basing it off uh, actual events. A, a lot, a whole lot of it actually, right? So I took a, a, a good few months to just research and I don't think I, I, even, I even like got a lot out, out of it. Uh, mm. And that's, that's where that my editor actually helped me a lot, right? Because if uh, I, I'll just do a plug for him, he's, uh, he has a YouTube channel called That Chinese History Guy, right? So just by the name of it, you know that he's good with Chinese history, right? So that's where he actually helped me a lot on it. Uh, a lot of the dialogues he actually reworked some of uh, some of it as, as well to, to make it flow a lot more coherently and so on. I want to know what this world my arena is because this looks really interesting. That is actually the very first comic that I launched in 2019. Right, I started it as a I also launched it during kick, uh, as a Kickstarter and I launched it as a single issues and subsequently I also compiled it into like the monster 200 pages graphic novel over here yeah so is this still available oh hang on is this still available <laughs> to buy yeah because i was just about to say Gangji, i don't know if you know but we're collected editions people especially when it comes to hardcovers so yes <laughs> and there's a reason why these are also in hardcovers and in fact they are of the same dimension as your marvel dc omnibuses as well Right, so oh. uh, like, yeah, there's a reason. There's the reason why is I, I I made them this size and this format because I collect comics as well myself. So I have a okay. I, I don't have a extensive collection like like both of you, but <laughs> I do have some of it and majority of it. I, I would say ninety percent of it is actually in hardcover as, as well. Right, so I'm a big fan wow. and I go for that. <laughs> awesome. So where can we grab those from? Um, so you can grab this on my own uh, online store. And I think there are also some other online shops that are that that carry it as well. Right. Uh so from my own store it will be karacomics.com. Right. That, that's where this yeah, this one. You can actually do it do it without order, you know, the lengthy just <laughs> www.karacomics.com. I think okay. that, that, that's my there. fault. So um <laughs> what we can do is hang on. Uh, here we go. Quick edit. There it is. And yeah, so, so when this, this is how they look uh, on the shelf, right? So all of them. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on a second. There we go. Yeah, okay. so, so the patient, yep. So we have Ooh, a Oh, you can change it to Australian. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so these are these two the hardcovers. Mm -hmm, that's right. So Chao Volume One is the is the latest one that I have, and then uh, there's a digital as well as a. Oh right, okay, version, yeah. sweet. That and is in then, the car. And then uh, 
And then yep, so the World Mario Night actually has a volume one and volume two as well. So yep. All right. Are both of the series uh still ongoing? Are you still working on them? Uh yes. In fact, Chao Volume Two is on its way. Uh, probably next year. I'm actually just doing working on a piece like last night. So this is one of the one of the pages that I'm still working on. <laughs> You've worked on major franchises like Star Wars with companies such as Tops. Yep. So, Tell so us I'm, about that. I'm actually a sketch card artist with uh, Tops as well. So uh, I recent they recently just released my first batch of sketch cards in their latest product, which is the Star Wars Chrome product. And then, Ooh. so I'm not sure if you're familiar with like their trading card uh, product. So basically, they have their their standard cards as well as the parallels and so on. And then each of their cases or boxes, there's a chance of getting a original sketch card, right? So, so that's, that's where I keep, uh, where, where I come in. And then I basically, I do a, a range of sketch card for them, send it back to them. And then they will just slot it into random boxes and for people to like, you know, have lucky draw kind of thing. How, how did you, how did you land that gig? I actually wrote in an email to them, uh, send them my portfolio. And then afterwards, uh, I think they like it. They showed my portfolio to Lucasfilm or was it Disney? Can't remember. And yeah, they approve it. So afterwards, they started to invite me for their projects, and I have been doing it for since since earlier this year. So I've been drawing for quite quite a fair bit for them already. It's about hundred. I think I'm counting about hundred seventy sketch cards for them so far. But then, out of the hundred seventy, I think about only about forty has been released so far. So I can't show the rest yet, and I don't have it because I already <laughs> sent it back to them. But yeah, that's that's how I actually uh, landed that gig, and yeah, it was it was good to work on all these all these major fan franchises. You 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 make it sound like it's it's so easy to 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 get into this. <laughs> <laughs> I probably cut away all the all the all the uh, <laughs> struggles and stuff. Yep. <laughs> And I believe you've created one of these um, creations. You've made some some animation as well. Okay, I think the animation you're referring to one of the. Okay, so for that, I, uh, I don't do the animation myself. But for when I released the World Marina, that volume one back in twenty nineteen, there was a local company who was doing all the all the visual effects and so on. They were actually trying to get into the comic scene. So they are at which they created was actually actually uh it's, it's sort of similar like web comics webtoon kind of thing but they make it into uh animated videos right Ooh. so yeah so they sort of adapted my comics the world my arena uh into the animated videos and then it's it's actually still available for viewing but since they, they haven't been continuing that since some time back yeah <laughs> it, oh, it was man. a cool experience though <laughs> That is so cool. Okay, we've got one more to show here as well. Uh, these are your webtoons, which you can find mm -hmm. right here as well. Yep. So it's, it's actually just a webtoon web comic version of Zhao. Uh, yeah, because just trying out different ways to reach out to different target audience because some people like the hardcover, some people perhaps like reading it digitally, or I think recently there are also a lot of people who enjoy reading web comics. It's an entirely different experience uh, because it's like, oh, you know, yeah. like scrolling <laughs> and so on. And then I have to do a lot of uh, editing, cutting up the pages, cutting up the panels into, into such a format. It takes quite a while, but I guess, mm -hmm. yeah, you never know if it, if, if it works. Same so too. I just started it, uh, I think, a few weeks ago. Yeah, man. Well, Digital comics are great, too. Bo has um, started to slowly transition uh, to reading it um, digitally as well. And you know, he's saying that he's enjoying it. Yeah, I really am because um, it just makes me concentrate a lot more on the pages and the story, you know, when you've got bad eyesight like I do as well, um, I just find it a lot better. Plus, when you've also got a, a room like this, there's only so much you can buy. So to be able to have stuff digitally is a real advantage now. But I'm still going to buy your hardcovers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks for the support. <laughs> um, so then if you've got all this digitally, does that is that extra content that I was talking about available here as well? For the webtoon itself? Yeah. So for the webtoon is actually just the the same story, but in a different format. Yeah, but the extra stuff I meant, like all that that history and um uh, the back matter. Oh, prob probably not. So, so because this webtoon is still relatively new, I think it's only up to episode episode eight, which is this one, uh, yeah. which is actually just chapter two within the within the uh, hardcover itself, right? So I don't oh. think I will be adding any of the bonus materials and anything uh, of those in the webtoons. So those are exclusive to the hardcover. We can see that. Oh, well, there you go. There's a reason to grab the hardcovers then. <laughs> that is so cool, man. And and trying out with um, all the other different platforms, um, do you actually track which uh, particular format is very receptive to uh, the readers? Mm. Or does it, no, it, it, it evens out like digital is as good as the print? Uh, I'm not. I can't be certain that digital or the physical works better for me, but I think I think both of them are not really exclusive to each other. So I, I do both of them. Uh, but with that said, uh, I still favor the print version uh, more. Though there are a lot of people who actually backed the Kickstarter, collected the hardcover, and then tell me that they actually just read the digital copy because they wanted <laughs> to protect that hardcover in yeah. pristine condition and then just read the, read the digital format. Right, so... <laughs> Yeah, so the webtoon is still so, relatively new. It's still like picking up, so I can't say that it works for me. Uh, mm. so for now, I would say uh, probably the the way of the way that I've been doing through Kickstarter, uh, launching the hardcover as well as the digital PDF version via that format. That's probably the best one for me so far. Beautiful. So how many Kickstarters have you run? Let me count. Uh, I think about six or seven so far. Oh, nice. Around, okay. Around that, yeah. Uh, but for the hard covers, I have only started in the last three kick Kickstarters because prior to that, I have been doing more towards the single issues. Uh, so releasing it as like one, one single issue format, but it's taking too much of my time, uh, mm. too much work, setting up the page, uh, the logistics and so on. Eventually, I, I, just, I just went with the hard cover. Looks nice on the shop as well. So <laughs> that's what I'm sticking with. Yeah, man. If I look distracted, it's because I'm put. I'm, I'm buying your books. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what got you into comics? Comics since I've gotten into comics since like very young, at a, at a very young age. Uh, maybe even even prior to like five, five, maybe four, five years old. Probably because in Singapore, we, we are actually exposed to many different kind of comics, like uh, Western comics. We have the manga. There's like Hong Kong comics, a lot, a lot of different kind of comics, right? So I actually started reading Japanese manga first. Ooh. And then I only got into like all the superhero comics in my 20s when, you know, like the MCU was at its peak. That was when I actually got, got into like the Western comics. But prior to that, I've, I've been exposed to a lot of uh, Japanese manga, like Hunter x Hunter. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, those series, like uh, Bleach. Which ones? Hunter x Hunter, Bleach. Oh, I uh, think I've heard of that, but no, I don't really know it. Yeah. Then those era that I watched, they are like Detective Conan. Uh, yeah, it's basically those those <laughs> those uh, manga, those anime series. Uh, that's, that's what got me into this. And I remember saying, tell, telling my parents that I want to be a comic artist uh, when I grow up. That was a good 20 <laughs> plus years ago and it was like an impossible dream back then because uh yeah back then the only route was really the traditional route whereby you go through a publisher and so on but who knows actually 20 20 years later down the road uh i can actually do it through kickstarter crowdfunding mm -hmm. uh and yeah <laughs> first right mm -hmm. Um, are you are you still a big big manga fan? Um, actually, recently I started reading lesser because I had to draw 
more comics oh. myself. Right, so so I can't be doing both at the same time. Uh, but when I commute to work, I actually still read comics here and there. Right now, I would say the last one that I have been reading is the Attack on Titan. Uh, Attack yeah. okay, on Titan, you are probably familiar with it. Uh, but I stopped halfway as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think midway of the series. Uh, right now I'm for Western comics. I'm actually reading the Power Rangers. Uh, series by Boom Studios. I think I'm about at issue thirty-ish or something like that. Reading via the hard covers. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm really oh, slow in my in my comics reading. I know one guy that loves Power Rangers. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that one right there. I never got into them myself, but I've got to admit those hardcover books look really beautiful. Yes, yes, it's really good. What about? Um, are you into any um, Jinju Ito? Oh no, I have heard of it, like, like all the horror horror comics, right? Yeah. But I'm not really like like a big horror comics fan, so yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I'm gonna I'm just gonna ram some titles off for you and see if, if you like any of them that I've got. Helsing. Nope. I haven't, nope. I haven't okay. read it. Yep. <laughs> you haven't read that. Um. Okay. What about Chainsaw Man? I heard of it. Haven't read it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Berserk. Berserk. Heard of it. Haven't read it. Okay. I'm, really, I'm really really slow in my manga. <laughs> okay. I've got one more for you. Akira. Nope. It's oh, very man. Yep. <laughs> man. I'm going to introduce you to some books. <laughs> <laughs> Sharif, what's your top manga titles? Dude, I've, I've already like got a, just a handful of uh, manga on, on my shelf. Um, I've got all, all three uh, Helsing Deluxes. Um, I am in the process of getting Vinland Saga. Um, volume Volume Four is coming out next month. Uh, yeah, can't wait for that to arrive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they look really good, actually. I want to get those too. Mm. So, um, were you ever into Marvel or DC? Yes, I mean MCU got me into Western comics, and then I I've been reading. I think the first one was probably around C when Civil War came out, and then I went back to read the comics. And I enjoy the comics more than the more than the movie, and then that's how <laughs> yeah. I got into the comics, right? Uh, and then I've been a big fan uh, of Marvel comics, uh, Fantastic Four to be exact, right? So, I'm, uh, and that's how I actually <laughs> that's what I actually got from uh, Sharif as well. <laughs> 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 yep. So, uh, but I've I haven't been following up on Marvel comics because of the you know all the reboots and so on. It's a bit hard, and and all the crossover stories is a bit hard for me to catch up. Yeah. And I read really slow. Yep. So, <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Um, so, not into DC then at all? DC, oh, where's, when was the last time I read, that I read DC? Probably Batman New 52, if I'm not wrong. That was when, <laughs> that was probably my last reading of DC Comics, I think. I think that was the last Batman I read as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I buy I, I do buy a lot, but I don't have the time to read. So <laughs> I would say <laughs> probably you'll have the same issue, right? <laughs> no, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I dare to say that probably 80% of my books are unread. 20% is already a good improvement for myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're freaking crazy, aren't we, us buyers? <laughs> it's absolutely crazy. Um so <laughs> with Sharif. With all the stuff that you're exposed to, uh, from uh, Eastern comics to Western comics, um, how how would you say your style is your style influenced by any of those? Yeah, good question. Mm, all right, I think in terms of writing style, probably more towards uh, I liken it more towards uh, Japanese manga. Uh, but for art style, I would say I'm leaning more towards uh, Western comics. Even though whenever I show my art portfolio to 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 those in the Western comic industry, they'll probably be like, "Oh, okay, this I, I can see the manga influence in it." <laughs> and when I show my art portfolio to the to the Asians, they'll be like, oh, I can see that I can tell that you enjoy Marvel and DC a lot." So I think I'm having some identity <laughs> crisis, probably. But I would say it's a good mix between the two. <laughs> So what would be your personal goals then? What is it that you're trying to ultimately do? do you, you might not even have that vision. You might just live 
day to day and you're just taking project by project. But if you do have any sort of end game or or big dream, what what would that be? I mean, currently I'm doing it as a side passion kind of thing. I still have a day job. I mean, the ideal case would really be like being able to live rather comfortably with this as the main as, as the main income source, main job. Uh, I mean, I, I would be able to focus on comics, you know, like all day, night long and so on. Right. And of course, I'm also expanding towards uh, not just drawing comics, but also like cover art as well as a uh, sketch card. And then just, I think right now I'm branding myself as uh, in this three direction as well. And then hopefully, I mean, in the long run, I'll be able to, I don't uh, make a name out in this, in this industry. And then, yeah, probably, probably start a school or something on comics in Singapore. <laughs> wow. There that went through my mind before, but I'm not sure if it's realistic enough. Uh, especially in <laughs> Singapore, uh, whereby arts is not really the main thing in Singapore, right? <laughs> so, but who knows, who knows? I mean, 20, 20, 30 years down the road, things could be very different as well. Yeah, man. Dream big, bro. Dream big. Yes. <laughs> Nothing wrong I mean, with that we'll, at all. If, if we were to go back and talk to a five, five-year-old counting, hey, this is what you're going to be doing uh, when you're in your late 20s, I don't think little you yes. would would even yes, yes. Um, believe. I, so, I wouldn't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so is there any... Okay, so it, who would you love to collaborate with? If you could pick an artist or a writer and you do the other job, um, who would you like to collaborate with? Who's your favourite mm. writers and artists? I think for a writer, I can't remember his name, but I enjoyed his run on Fantastic Four. I think it was the Marvel, <coughs> sorry, the Marvel Knights uh, Fantastic Four. Roberto Ooh. something. I can't really pronounce his name, but I really enjoyed the run because it was like a, like a very different kind of superhero story. Uh, more towards the family side of Fantastic Four, which I really enjoy a lot. Uh, and you can see in Chao, which is like very family oriented, uh, not family oriented, but rather like it focuses on the family itself, right? So I think it's a Marvel, Marvel Four, or Marvel Knights Four, Fantastic Four, something like that, right? Oh, so four. that's the writer that I enjoy a lot. Hang on right, a minute. Uh, Keep talking. <laughs> right, and then for for artists, I really love uh Steve McNeven's art. Mm. Right, so mm. but of course there are a lot a lot of good artists, but of course I came into contact with that uh, because I if I remember correctly he was the one of the artists for Civil War he was also yeah. the artist for Marvel Knights Fantastic Four but yes this is one of this was one of the one for uh, under the Marvel Knights uh yeah yeah in print but there was another so series an ongoing series I think it was the this is one of the short story. I think there's only four issues, limited series, and then there's one more which was uh 30 issues long run. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, I, I think I've I think I've got that um prepped for my custom. Um four, I think. The yes, yes, yes. The, yes yep. There was a Marvel Knights Fantastic Four that ran for 30 issues. Yeah. Yep. Wow. 30 issues. Okay, I did not know that wow okay i can't think of another marvel knights that's gone for that long i think if you, if, you, if you google google marvel knights 4 like literally the number four then you get it is uh, actually from 2004 to 2006 30 issues and the writer is a uh, roberto i can't pronounce the middle name but it's roberto sakasa or something like that. marvel knights 4 okay well oh, there you go uh Roberto Aguirre's Sacasa and art yep. by Steve McNiven. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, sweet. There you go, man. You taught me something. <laughs> it's a, yeah, it's 2004 series. Sick. Yes, yes. I really enjoyed it. But I think it's a really underrated series. I haven't really heard anyone mentioning it before. Yeah, but like, yeah. It. <laughs> I think yeah. that's, that's the, the best thing about, um, talking with with um other comics fans that you know everyone has different tastes and like like Bo just said he hasn't well he's not familiar with the series where 
um, it's pretty high in your list of uh, favorites. Yep. Well, that's what, makes, yeah. that's what makes the comic book community so fantastic, pardon the pun, because it doesn't matter what, <laughs> what, what, what country you're in or your age group, there's always something to learn and something to teach other people. I'm, I'm looking it up on my digital comics right now. <laughs> and I can't find it, so it's going to take too long, so I'll give up about that. Anyway, <laughs> so what, what, what drew you to the Fantastic Four out of all Marvel? What was it that was attractive to you? I guess it's, it's the family interaction between the four of them. I mean, it's like a very dysfunctional family, but at the same time... Uh, I enjoy the, the interaction between them a lot, like between uh uh Reed as well as Susan, and then between uh like Human Torch as uh and the thing. Right. So so that that bond, that interaction, and then I really like it when they had uh when they had a future foundation, their kids. Oh. And uh, it, it was really fun. Right. So I, I mean you didn't get that in in a lot of uh superhero comics because it's usually like for example Spider Man. I mean Spider Man is good. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, he's a solo character, right? And then this is like a big group, and they are they they form a team together because they are family, right? It's very different from like let's say uh let's say when we have uh, Avengers, right? They are just like random superheroes together, or like okay, not random, but <laughs> but just different superheroes together, or like even like X Men, right? Uh, yeah, I I guess that bond between between in this team itself. Uh, is what attracted me most, and then what differentiates uh, this superhero team from others, right? So, mm. yeah, that, that's probably what attracted me the most. <laughs> yeah, good answer. So, so, so do, do you do you continue on with um, the other series uh, of Fantastic Four as well, or um, do you branch out um, to other to other series? I read mostly in Fantastic Four. At one point in time, I collected a lot of the. I tried collecting all the single issues of Fantastic Four at one point in time, and I gave up <laughs> because that's too much. <laughs> so I, I read quite a quite a number of them. Uh, I think there was the there was the Mark Wait era. There yeah. was the series from I, I know Brian Hitch drew the drew drew one series of it. Uh, can't remember the writer. I think it should be Brian Michael Bendis, if I'm not wrong. Now, of course, the Jonathan Hickman's run. And mm -hmm. I think I stopped at roughly after, right before Secret Wars, and I, I read Secret Wars. Since then, I, ca I kind of dropped off. Yeah, because they, they started rebooting. And then, of course, Reed and Susan and Reed and Sue and the whole family, they actually went off to, like, you know, like, rebuild the universe, leaving behind just Human Torch and the thing. And then it's like, you know, Fantastic Four become Fantastic Two. So it's like... Eh. Yeah. <laughs> so I stopped reading since then, yeah. But that's pretty much where I, where I left off. Yeah, Jonathan Hickman's was my favorite. I loved that run. <laughs> so these Singapore uh, Comic Cons, do you, do you go every year? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, my first time having a booth there at RTS at the artist LA was I think twenty. 19 i think 2019 then of course uh, i want to continue all the way but 2020 there was like uh, COVID. you know like 2021 we couldn't have it but i have since gone back in 2022 2023 and of course this year as well so in the in in australia uh to get a booth is not cheap you know they're, they're pretty expensive is it the same in singapore or is it is it more uh, uh is it more affordable in Singapore Comic Con, I think it's well known that it's, it's very expensive. It's really expensive, right? Uh, we have a lot of uh, conventions in Singapore, but the only one that is like really the more towards the Western comics, superheroes kind of uh, or oriented kind of convention is Singapore Comic Con, which is usually held in December. That is the only one, right? So, so most of us comic fans usually go for that. Uh, so, so, so probably it's a little more expensive as well. The other artists early throughout the entire year, it can go slightly cheaper, perhaps like, I'm not sure if it's cheap as compared to like Australia, but it's about 300 
Singapore dollars for a weekend for for the standard conventions, but for yeah, bigger right. ones like like uh Singapore Comic Con, it will be easily more than double of that for a weekend. Wow. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So do you typically because a lot of a lot of self published creators do do you lose money by putting yourself out there in these Singapore cons? Do you break even? Or do you make a bit of money or is it just different? I mean, uh, thankfully, so far I've been very blessed. Uh, each oh, of my Comic Con have always been either broken even, especially at the start at the start when I was still starting out, to uh, making sufficient money, uh, like profits and so on uh, in, the, in the more recent years and so on. So very, very thankful for that. Uh, but with that said, uh, I usually approach Comic Con with both my original works as well as uh, fan art, right? Because I mean, fan art is usually the one that captures people's eye and that <laughs> helps to secure, secure in a way, uh, my investment. And then the original art, uh, sorry, the original content like Zhao, the World Marina and so on. Uh, of course, I want to push it along, but uh, I don't want to put too much pressure on original creation alone. Uh, and of yeah. course, on myself <laughs> financially as well, right? So usually yeah. I go with this approach. Uh, that has worked very well for me so far. And probably I will be continuing that. Yeah, it, it is so true though. Like it's a shame, but it's the reality of it where like even scrolling through your Instagram, I love your art, like as in your original characters and all that, but you can't help but be drawn to the Ninja Turtles and the Godzilla and the Transformers. And, you know, because not only are they characters that you love, but you do them so well. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So usually, usually, uh, like for example, in conventions when I do prints of those, then those are really what captures the eye. So when, uh, when the con goers, goers actually come to my booth, then they'll be like, oh, okay, they look at all those. Then if I were to introduce them to uh, my comics, then they'll be like, okay, wow, very impressive. And then they flip the book and then afterwards they put it down. I want that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's most of the time. But, but I guess, uh, yeah, I mean, it's important to do fan art. I would highly recommend anyone uh, who's doing original content to do some fan art as well. Uh, takes a lot away from the pressure, but yeah. Sharif, you've gone to Singapore Comic Con? Dirty. I, I think they only started after I left. Um, maybe it's on purpose, but you know. <laughs> Yeah, in and yeah, in and yeah, out when when the the group uh, shares uh, you know photographs or even just just planning uh, to meet up and then uh, go as a group to the cons, I'll go. Why am I not there? <laughs> uh, you know, the I, I've been I, I've, I've tried to f um, follow it year um, year in and year out, and it seems like the the con is getting. Uh, much bigger uh, in, in terms of the, the, the space that's being used, in terms of the response. Um, I've also noticed that a lot of cosplayers are uh, coming out and and just being present at the con. Um, I, I think the, the Singapore comics scene now is so much more out there. It's more vibrant uh, than before. Uh, like in in terms of the local comic shops, um, a lot have mushroomed over over the years. Um, after I left, I think there was maybe three or five more that uh, came came out. Uh, so it's I I think the this the Singapore comic scene is really healthy. Uh, a, a lot of uh, people are more engaged uh, in it right now. So uh, what are your thoughts, uh, Kang Ching? I I think it's healthy, definitely. Uh, but I'm not sure if we have like a growing or like increasing number of readers or collectors. Actually, mm. I mean, for for a small country like Singapore, I would say we do have quite a number of comic shops. Because I I've heard like in some other places, like even in the United States, between two comic shops, it could be like a good distance. But within Singapore, whereby from one end to the other is about maybe forty. 40 click we have a good five to six comic shops around right which which is which is a lot uh which is i, I mean it's, it's, it's good uh, but i still think that we have a very much smaller community 
uh, of collectors, readers, a lot of them are actually uh, in, I mean, I mean the, the older, the older batch, uh, hardly we see any younger, younger mm. readers coming up as well. Right. So, I mean, there are a lot of like younger artists, younger fans, but they don't really read comics. They follow like more of the mainstream manga or like anime series. Right. So, so I, I'm not too sure if I would say that it's very, very healthy right now, but depending on how, how we look at it, if in terms of like comic sales or, or like how the, how the variants are selling and stuff like that. Uh, I think Singapore is, is doing doing well in that area. But let's say if we are talking about like original comic coming from Singapore, I think there is still a lot of room for improvement. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. But it's definitely, it's definitely uh, improving. I mean, right now we, ha- we do have a few original comics uh, publishers in Singapore as well as compared to like just a few years back, we probably only had one. Right now we have a good three or four and one of them even have books making it into uh, the diamond diamond distributor right Ooh. so so that's i mean i mean that's a good sign overall right we still had i mean singapore still have a lot of room for improvement in terms of comics but mm. i mean baby steps <laughs> <laughs> so obviously the, the the name kang means something to us being marvel fans mm. does kang have a meaning or it must because all names have a meaning what does kang mean to do nothing with comics. What does your name mean? Where did your parents get that from? Because that's that's a bit of a coincidence. It's like, you know, my parents, for instance, <laughs> calling me Raphael, and I just love the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Actually, my I mean, my name, uh, Kang Jing or Kang Jing in, in Mandarin pronunciation, is actually uh, inspired from a very famous uh, Chinese novel. Right, so the Chinese novel is actually called Legend of the Condor Heroes. It's a Wuxia novel, very, very famous. Uh, and then there was like a lot of uh, live action adaptations of that novel, especially in like the 70s. Even till now today, there, there's actually a new adaptation of this same series, right? I think a, a good five to six years, you will always see a new reboot, new series, new adaptation by another company of this uh, novel, right? So in this novel, the protagonist is actually called uh, Guo Jing. Uh, the J I N G, right? And then uh, the antagonist is actually called Yang Kang, which is a uh, you know Kang as in K A N G, right? So my parents were actually like watching this uh, adaptation from nineteen eighties. It was replaying in nineteen nineties, and then and then uh, my mom was pregnant with me, and then she was like watching this drama, <laughs> and she loved the drama. She loved the characters, and ta-da, that's how my name came about, like Kang Jing. And of course, when I when I when I go uh came to know about this like this backstory of my name, yeah, I got interested in this in this novel as well. Uh, so I went to read the novel. I'm I mean like read I think re- reading English is a lot faster, a lot easier. But reading Mandarin like, or, the, or the Chinese characters, like even though I'm a Chinese, but reading Chinese characters is uh, can be a chore. But I still read the entire novel because uh that's the origin of my name. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I watched the different adaptations as well, right? So. Yeah, so that's how my name come, come about. But if you are referring to like, what does the actual character name, uh, sorry, the character uh, Kang means in Chinese is actually, I think usually people uh, associate it with, it with uh, health. Hmm. All right. Because yeah. I, I want to, I've been trying to convince my partner that when we have a kid, if it's a boy, I want to name him, name him Goku. But I don't think <laughs> she's really going to, I don't think she really wants to go for it. But... <laughs> We'll, 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 I'll, I'll convince her one day, I reckon. <laughs> All the best. <laughs> We're going to have this conversation, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a cool name, man. <laughs> not, not denying, but... Uh, yeah. That could be a challenge. A huge challenge. <laughs> yeah. Imagine an Australian kid going to school with his Australian language uh, accent is, yo, my name's Goku. <laughs> I just don't know if it'll work, but you know, I, 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 I don't mind gambling on that. Um, <laughs> so, is there any any sort of what's what's what advice would you give being a creator? I know we touched on it a little earlier, but if there's any other, because you're the as we mentioned, you're the only one that came forward and was confident enough, um, and and you trusted in uh, Sharif to come on Aussieverse, which we're very, very grateful for. 
Um, what sort of advice would you give to other people that may see this video and think to themselves, uh, I've got some talent, I can draw or I can write or create anything. Um, what advice would you give to them to take that step to put themselves out there and show their face and show their their work and creativity? I mean, if it's a new create, uh, I mean, a new uh, create, aspiring creator who can draw but haven't put anything out there yet when they are still designing, at, when they are still at the phase of like designing their world, world building and so on, I would, my, my <laughs> biggest advice would really be uh, to just do it. I mean, I'm not a Nike ambassador, but just do it. Just put your work out there. Stop at the world building and and keep going to and fro. I mean, your very first story will not will definitely not be your best story. Uh, of course, I understand that because uh, when I was actually writing my first story, the world Marina, uh, in my mind, it's the best story. It's the best story I have. Uh, it's gonna be the biggest biggest thing ever. I mean, like I'm gonna make big bucks from it. Even though I know that uh, it's I, I'm I'm probably a novice at that uh, at a stage and. Uh, it's, it's not gonna be but i guess in every creator's mind we always think that that one story in my our, our mind that is a very good story we just want to make it perfect we keep on going back uh and reviewing what we have drawn like uh maybe one week ago and then mm, i don't like that we redrew or like uh the story plot that you you wrote and then you just keep working on it or you just want to keep on developing uh building on that that world that you have created but mm, but you're not advancing into drawing the actual story or the actual pages out, right? So, so a lot, I, I've seen a lot of talented creators actually stuck within this phase of like going in circles of the world building. And after many years, they don't really have anything to show for it. It's, it's, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a pity because some of the ideas are really good. So my biggest advice would really be to just uh, come up with something, uh, maybe like a ash can, uh, 10 pages, uh, or like a, a first chapter, put it out there, uh, put your work out there and then let people see it. I mean, uh, maybe down a few years down the road, looking back, you might, you might be thinking like, oh, okay, uh, that is really bad. Uh, I should have done that. But right now, when I look back at the very first work that I've put out, uh, I think it's not good, but I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't be where I am today. Uh, without that very first step. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm actually also not certain what gave me the courage to really just like, you know, like put that first work out there so confidently, even though I had no, uh, I mean, no background every, or anything at that stage. But I think that really helped me a lot uh, in pursuing what I enjoy uh, and getting me to where I'm today. And of course, uh, setting me up for more in the future as well. Yeah, very good answer. See, it doesn't matter where in the world you are from, ladies and gentlemen, whether you're in Singapore, Australia, America, Mongolia, I don't care where you are. Put yourself out there. Show the world who you are, what you can create. And, you know, you, it doesn't matter how small your little entry into the world is, like the Ashcan you mentioned. I've got a little comic here uh, from an Australian creator. Uh, that's Look at the size of that, right? Like, very small, right? Is Raid that, the world. Like, this is from like credit card size. Yep. <laughs> this is from Edmund Kearsley. You might see him on some Australian YouTube, and it's it's literally one page here, two, three, and that's it. Three pages, but it's just really cool little. There you go. There's a plug for you, Ed. <laughs> he's um he's done a lot of other comics as well, not just these. He's made proper comics too. Uh, but, yeah, go check that out as well. Um, all right, Sharif, have you got anything else for our esteemed guest today? Uh, I, 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 I think we have said what we want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you'd like to still talk about, Kang? Mm. I can't this think is of your time. At the moment. <laughs> your time to shine, my friend. Um, I do have quite a number of works uh, coming up soon. Uh, mm. Right. And 
One of it is actually an exclusive cover for Singapore Comic Con. Uh, for yes. Uh, so depending okay. on what, <laughs> when this when this uh episode is actually going on YouTube, if it's after first of September, then <laughs> then I can share it. But uh, if not, then we will be until first of September. So that's that's something that I'm looking forward to a lot. Uh, and of course, well, I'm also you're... working on. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, you're the boss, man. I, I was planning on popping this on Monday, but if you if first of September isn't far, so if you would rather, <laughs> if you would rather we post this up after the first of September, we can easily do that. But no pressure either. I don't want to force you into doing anything. <laughs> whatever you want. I, I mean, we can do it uh, if it's after first of September. In fact, I can show both of you what it is, uh, and you'll be the first to see it. <laughs> All right, uh, give me a moment. I'll have to take it, all right? Thank you. Just a moment. Uh, exclusive. Exclusive. It may, be, <laughs> it may be something that Sharif will be very interested in because just now we mentioned that Sharif is actually a Power Rangers fan. All right, so. Oh, dude. The exclusive, and then you can, it's a Singapore Comic Con exclusive, and you you can see that the, the yes. Marina Bay Sands, uh, the Singapore skyline is at the back with, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, and this is for uh, MMPR one issue one two two, which is which was the last issue for the main series, the main yes. series before they actually you know rebooted. They just announced a reboot this earlier today, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. So this is the exclusive, which will be launching on the pre sales will be launching on uh first of September, and yeah, yeah, it's actually my first exclusive with uh Boom Studio, so Ooh. yep, quite very excited about it. <laughs> wow, I. I am gonna need an autograph uh, copy. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that is cool, man. Uh, so so, so we'll, on... definitely, we'll definitely post this after the first. <laughs> yes. So on Aussie bus, this is this is the uh, first appearance of the cover on Aussie bus. <laughs> oh man! Ooh, score. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess that's about a wrap, man. This hour went really, really fast. It was very, very easy talking to you. Um, very, very humbled and uh, just grateful that you mm -hmm. took the time out of your day to be able to join us here. Sharif, thank you very much for putting Aussieverse out there and, and catching this fish. We really appreciate <laughs> it. Um, I guess the only thing left to, to, for me to ask you uh, it, I was gonna, I was gonna get Sharif to ask it to you, but he doesn't seem to ever get the question right. So I, every time I drop the ball, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, Mister Kangji, if I had to ask you what is Aussie verse, what would be your answer? Okay, I've been practicing this, so Aussie verse is for life. Hey, am I doing right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. I hope all of us learns that. <laughs> all right. Well, if you ever want to come back on the show, mate, you ever want to promote yourself again with any new projects, you ever just want to hang out on any of your other on any of our other shows, please hit us up. We'd be more than happy to have you. You're an extended part of the Aussieverse family now, and that isn't just for a short time. That is for life. We'll catch you next time, ladies and gentlemen.